Hi, and welcome to this edition of Fresh Hope for Mental Health. Our mission here at Fresh Hope for Mental Health is to empower you to live well in spite of your mental health challenge by sharing insights through interviews, practical tools for living well, encouragement, and courage for overcoming all from a Christian perspective. And now, here's your host, Pastor Brad Hayes. Hello, my friend, and welcome to Fresh Hope for Mental Health. I'm Brad Hafes, your host. Our purpose here on Fresh Hope for Mental Health is to empower you to live a faith-filled, rich, and full life in spite of having a mental health diagnosis. And I'm so glad to have a friend with us on this episode or this edition of Fresh Hope. Um, Kayla is a friend as well as an ambassador for Fresh Hope out in the northwest part of the United States. And she's here with me today, and we got a number of things to talk about. So welcome. Hi, I'm really happy to be here and just to kind of visit with everybody and share kind of what's gone on in my life. So. Yeah. Well, speaking <laughs> of your life and all that's going on in your life, tell me, about your journey with mental health. Let's start at that point. Just a brief synopsis. All right. Uh, Well, my mental health journey basically started when I went um, to my second year of college. And Mm -hmm. I got overwhelmed with everything Mm -hmm. that was happening um, at school. And um, I was also involved in um, an an accident that my friend had, um, when she was, um, you know, we were on a little hiking adventure and she had got hit um, with a rock and it was right in front of me and it was pretty extreme and she had to be, um, airlifted to a hospital. So a lot of trauma. Yeah, it was, it was a traumatic experience and I remember not feeling anything and I was, kind of upset at myself for not feeling anything. I didn't realize I was in shock. So um, it really didn't hit me till that happened the summer before my sophomore year. And then I saw her right as the year started because she ended up recovering and being okay. And she was talking about God must have a purpose for my life. And I don't know what it is. And then it kind of just brought back everything. And I was afraid if I would have you know, if I would have got hit at the rock, if I would have, you know, died, mm-hmm. was I mm-hmm. ready? You know, was I was right with God because I had mm-hmm. some things that I felt like I really wasn't right with God at that time. And and um, so that just brought up a whole bunch of stuff with religious stuff and then overwhelming with school and just it just got too much. And I just kind of fell apart and I had to go back home. Sure. And um, leave the school. Mm-hmm. I had this dream that I was going to, you know, well, well, the school was where my parents went to school. So, uh, and that's where they met and everything. And I had sure. this dream, like, I'm going to meet my future <laughs> husband here. And this is going to be perfect and everything. You know, I right. had it all figured out. And then I um, really pretty much then that was like that dream was shot. And I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what was next for me. I thought I'd never get married. I thought I'd never, you know, all this stuff. And so um, I ended up going into a really deep depression and um, Mm. had to be uh, hospitalized several times. Um, And it was, you know, really like hard for me to get out of. And I remember just staring at the ceiling, watching time go by Mm -hmm. and just like, really like feeling like what is the purpose for all this um i uh, after about a year my um my husband came into my life and things uh, were okay for a little while and I, I we got married after like six months of of um of dating uh so it was kind of a quick you know and it was it was perfect it was a real romance thing you know sure. everything i wanted um, but then when we settled into real life, it was basically, um, I started getting depressed again. I started, I wasn't working. I wasn't able to work. Um, 
we decided to have a baby and then that complicated things. Sure it did. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And at, at this time, um, I didn't even have a diagnosis of bipolar yet because I never had a, uh, an episode of mania, which is that they were looking for that as a marker. Right. Um, I had it in my family. Um, so, mm-hmm. but, um, I got, um, a real manic episode in my seventh month of pregnancy, oh boy. I had to be hospitalized during that, um, like three weeks or so. Oh wow! Um, started on medication, but that was really the best thing for me because I finally got the right diagnosis, the right medication, and everything. And so that was just a real blessing yeah. to be able to. <laughs> you know, move forward from that and having a baby and everything. Yeah, you were probably a much better mommy uh, because they had diagnosed you. Yeah. Yes, for sure. And even though it was hard to be involuntarily hospitalized at that, you know, pregnancy. Oh, I can't imagine, yeah. And go through the court system of trying, you know, to be released and, you know, having people come and watch um, make sure I was taking care of him correctly and everything for a little while. It was real humbling, you know, just sure, to, <laughs> to sure. really I'm sure. have to be like, oh. <laughs> yeah. 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 So uh, somewhere along the line, you heard about Fresh Hope then, right? That's how yes. we met. And so tell me about how you found Fresh Hope and a little bit about your journey with that. Yeah. And uh, I, I was talking to a friend about starting a mental health group um, at our church um, about a year before we discovered Fresh Hope. And Hmm. um, I had actually written a book about my journey and everything. And um, I was, you know, really like focusing on reaching outward and and trying to help others um, with this and realizing that, you know, God gave me you know, purpose and the pain and everything. Sure. So, um, so my friend and I were like, Oh, let's, you know, let's start this group, but we really didn't have a, um, um, uh, what do you call it? A, like a format for the group oh, or yeah. any, any right. kind of thing to go on. So we were just kind of floundering and just doing some meetings and stuff. And then I just saw, I guess I saw an advertisement maybe on hmm. Facebook or something. I don't remember, remember how I stumbled upon hmm. hearing about Fresh Hope, but I was really excited when I did because I was reading about it. And, and I told my friend, Oh my goodness, we, this is what we need. <laughs> this is what uh, we need. <laughs> you know, so I contacted um, you, Brad, right, you know, right away or contacted uh-huh. who, whoever was doing, um, you know, the helping groups start. Getting, yeah. Yeah. Getting people started and um, got started on the training and she, she got into the training and we started our group and um, I think it was 2015 sometime. Yeah. It's something been like a that. while. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so we, you know, we had started that group, um, for the adults and, and the loved ones. And, and then, um, a few years ago, um, I was approached or I was talking to somebody about, you know, they were looking at doing a mental health group at their church, a a different church here in Mm -hmm. the area. Um, but they'd seen that we already had a group. Um, and then I got to talking to this gal that she's a healing and recovery um, uh, person at this uh, church. And she was like, wow, we kind of need some of the teens. And so we started like going, hmm, maybe we could do something with teens. Sure. And I knew that um, Fresh Hope had just come out kind of with a, a teen um, group kind of mm-hmm. um, aversion. program. Like a <laughs> yeah. version of the yeah, with the principles for overcoming, you know, and just kind of adapting the tenants a little bit. So it was really, you know, I got excited. I was like, oh, I want to do this. And I never really thought, I can't work with teenagers. I, I don't, they're annoying. I don't like, you know, I've, I've thought of those <laughs> things before because, well, because I worked with like preschool kids and stuff. Because right. I felt like I was accepted by them and everything. And it was like, you kind of know where God wants you to go when it's like you're kind of resisting that thing, <laughs> yep. you know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, okay, I know it's not my idea, but I mean, we used to want to help people in our, um, 
you know, we used to, I used to have this dream of like, oh, helping at a orphan home and mm. being like a house parent. Mm-hmm. And then that didn't work out. But I think God just had a different direction sure. for me to go. Yes. Sure. Us to go, you know, and that. Yeah. And, um, and so just started doing stuff with the teens group. And then, um, just recently the last like month, um, I was talking to someone at my, at my work about her, um, her child that had some mental health issues and they were like 10 or 11 years old. And she's like, nothing for these people, for these kids. I mean, it's frustrating. Can't find anything. And I'll mentioned it to, to Brad, you know, like, Hey, what about this? You know, what about preteens? You know, why not start even earlier, you know, (laughs) get these mental health issues solved earlier, especially with this pandemic and everything. So I was, um, talking to him and he he had someone that that he knew that would benefit so we connected these parents together and the and the kids and we've been having meetings um uh pretty much weekly those last month or so or so so it's been really it's been really cool and i never thought i'd work with that age group either because (laughs) you know (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) well and you know one really good thing the pandemic has done uh, one of the little silver linings is that groups are people are less afraid of meeting online through zoom now you know yes. or whatever platform is used and that's really good because that way we can have groups online and i think kids especially are probably more open to it but then again they might be burned out after this year with school <laughs> Yeah, online. the teens really the teens are really wanting to meet in person. That's what's mm. been hard on the Zoom with them. Um hmm. so we are meeting in person as Good. long as there's a few of them that want to meet. Sure. And then we still keep the Zoom link open though for the teen group, you know, because right. we do have a few people that have joined us um since we started online, you know, in case they want to yeah. join. And the the preteen groups Uh, strictly on on zoom right now so anybody could join sure so So if you have a teenager or a preteen and um you know you don't live where kayla lives or even if you do um how do they get a hold of you kayla if they're interested in possibly getting involved with it well right now um i think the best way is uh, by email for me and I actually um, have just my my personal email is fine right okay. now. It's it's uh, Warners W A R N E R S one two three four at gmail dot com. I love that Warners one two three four at gmail dot com. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. have to get well, you a fresh us, hope email so, at some yeah. point, right? <laughs> I do, but you know what happened? My my, I got a new phone and I can't figure out how to get my oh. email. So I need to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I would say that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I understand that. So for now, that my personal one's just fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you have a teen or a preteen and you'd like to at least talk with Kayla or find out more about when the group meets, how to do and connect with them, you want to email her at warners, W-A-R-N-E-R-S, 1234, at gmail.com. Now, you have been on a, a different journey, or uh, an additional journey, on top of everything, here in the last, what, a year or two? Or Yeah, it's been about... About, well, see, August is when I started this, this particular health journey, this, of this last year. So August, 2020. Wow. So tell me about it. What, what has this journey been? Well, um, I've been working on, uh, just creating more healthy habits. Um, and I'm eating had always been a struggle for me, like my weight. Um, I gained weight back when, after I had, um, our first son, after the, you know, diagnosis and everything, I was put on a medication that I know, you know, made Mm -hmm. me 
want to eat more and I was eating yeah. a lot more and I gained quite a bit of weight. And, um, so after that, I really, um, I really had had to, you know, lose weight. So I had lost weight and I kept it off for a while, um, until I had our second son and we're, we have our, our kids are like almost eight years apart. And, oh um, so I, I kept it off pretty well. Um, and exercise and everything. I worked at an exercise place for, um, for about six years. Um, huh. and then, um, then my, um, my son was born and I, you know, I exercised up to my, um, up to when I had him and then, um, had him and it was about, I went back to my weight pretty much, but I think I never changed my eating habits and so I just kind of cre- creeped and creeped and creeped up again. And every time I'd, I'd get up to where I'd be frustrated, upset of myself. And so I'd just be like, okay, now I'm going to get serious about it, you know. And then i go back to, you know, I was very disciplined when I wanted to be. But otherwise, you know, I'd be like, it's like an all or nothing kind of thing. And I right. don't know if it's bipolar thing or what, because, but I just have that all or nothing kind of dichotomous thinking or whatever, you know? Sure. And so, um, I've been trying to find balance in that and everything. And, um, I just, um, my sister was doing something, um, to lose weight and she started, um, kind of coaching. Um, and so, you know, t- I gained, uh, weight from COVID obviously. And I had mm. kind of maintained for about a year or so, you know, and I kind of cut out exercising and tried to do the keto thing where, you know, the fat for energy and sure. actually it felt mm-hmm. really good. So I never, so I thought, well, I don't have to exercise now. I feel good already. <laughs> but I was kind of exercising to feel good, yes. you know, too. So I'm like, ah, oh, might as well not work extra hard, you know, yeah. just eat better and stuff. But then um, when COVID hit, it was like, I, you know, I went from 10,000 steps a day chasing preschoolers around to sitting and binge watching Netflix and getting yeah. about a thousand steps. Yeah. And I gained like 10 pounds in a week from my scale that I mm. see that. And I was like, is that even possible? <laughs> but <laughs> um, I just, um, I got frustrated with myself. And I remember um, my sister came to visit in, um, in July. And, um, beginning like 4th of July time. And I remember feeling like, Oh, I'm just, I need to get back to exercising again, you know? And so I sure. got this exercise, um, bike stationary bike. And I was, you know, after she left, um, you know, I was thinking, Oh, well, you know, I'm not going to do what she's doing. I'm, I know I can exercise and lose weight and stuff, you know? And because we always know what to do, right? Sure. And we just don't do it. But, yeah, exactly. But I, I could tell so, you how to do it, but. Yeah, exactly. Do as I say, not as I do. Yes, kind of exactly. Uh, so I started exercising like an hour a day on this recumbent little uh, or recumbent stationary bike, you know, and I'm like, just, you know, doing this. And like a month later, I'm like, no change and I'm trying to eat a little bit better, you know, not mm-hmm. so much half and half in my coffee and <laughs> yeah, know, all this yeah. stuff. Um still higher fat and stuff though. Um but I just wasn't I mean I just needed help <laughs> to sure. to get back on track. So I'm like my sister started doing the coaching thing with this program and she's like asking me um you know hey can can you like help me out and like, let me talk, you know, talk to you about it, you know, so I can practice talking to people about it and stuff. And so I was like, Oh, well, actually I'm kind of thinking about doing it. So, you know, might cool. as well help her out. You know, she's a single mom right now with two kids. Sure. And, and so, um, I said, oh, I'll try it just to lose like my 15 COVID 15 or whatever, uh-huh. you know? So, so I really started like, um, getting into the program and, um, in August, middle, middle of August, and I lost some weight and, and I basically just really was focusing on, 
um, not just my eating habits, but my um, mental health too. Sure. Um, we have a, a thing like a interactive journal that we, that we use in this program. And it's um, it really works on your mindset and like your habits and like sure. how to change your like ways of thinking about things. Yeah. And it really, I noticed it was a lot like the counseling that I was getting, like, paying for counseling before um you know a Uh, lot of the stuff in this this book it's like a for a year long that you go through it okay and just different elements of health and stuff it's not not just like about weight stuff but so um, do you feel better then and do you emotionally i think emotionally you sound like you feel well is that correct yes yeah, and it makes a difference in your moods and your because if you're yeah. like for instance, I find if I eat sugar, I'm more moody. Yes, definitely. Uh, and I just I feel like you know if I'm giving myself the right kind of fuel for my body and stuff like that, and I just really feel good about myself and more more um confident like i'm doing everything i can do you know Mm -hmm. for myself and um then i have you know if i'm eating like like for me i don't know when i eat like sugar and eat overeat stuff i'd be bored and i'd eat more and stuff Mm -hmm. and then i'd be grumpy with everybody oh yeah because and then i treat everybody bad because I was mad at myself pretty much, sure. you know, and just irritated at my own self, but just taking it out on them when they didn't even do anything, you know. <laughs> so I'm just been a much better mom and everything as far when I feel Wonderful. good about myself, I'm going to treat other people better. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be able to love better and be a better Christ follower and everything, you know. So, yeah, it's really, it's so, been really great for my mental health and sure. positivity. Yeah. Well, now, while with Fresh Hope, we've we've had a number of podcasts where people have shared, oh, how either they've lost weight or we had a doctor talk about the addiction to sugar and things like that. Um, And I think many of us struggle with weight. Um, Statistically, I think there's something to do with the medicines and uh, the craving for carbs, especially with some Mm -hmm. of the the medicines we take. Um, At least that's what I tell my wife. Um, The the thing that I'd like you to do is tell us what is the program. And if you're listening today, it's not because I think that this is the only one or you should do this if you have a weight problem. But if you're relating to it and you want to know more about it, just like anything else, I want you to be able to get a hold of Kayla and uh, to to see if it would be the right thing for you. Um, so what is it that you did or are doing? Yeah, well, it's, it's called the Habits of Health Transformational System. And uh-huh. it's um, basically, um, a doctor, Dr. Wayne Scott Anderson, he uh, was a, a surgeon and he helped people to, um, you know, get, you know, fix, well, he p- helped fix the problems after they'd already been, been going for a while, you know, heart surgery and all that kind mm, of stuff. Mm-hmm. So um, he just got tired of, you know, helping people just, you know, fix them after the, you know, he wanted to go back. And, you know, kind of nip it in the bud before it, the whole problem got started and help people learn healthy habits and stuff. So he went back, got his nutrition um, degree, lived uh, in a trailer for a while with his wife, you know, studied, wow. he got his degree and developed this program. And um, he worked with um, with a company, um, Metafast Company. Um, who had a good science-based um, product that they were that they were doing for um, for weight loss? Um, because part of his program is um, and getting getting people to a healthy weight. Because um, we 
we coach in all areas uh, of the of health not you know healthy weight is kind of where people need to start right you know and they get their healthy weight under control and their hydration you know enough water and then sleep and then healthy motion and um, healthy surroundings mm-hmm. you know who you surround yourself with and all the people that you mm-hmm. that you spend time with um and um so all these healthy um macro um habits mm-hmm. and um so he developed this program with along with metafast and now it is um optavia is your best life is what they call it and mm-hmm. um and so that's kind of it's all um metafast is going to going over to the optavia and um so um this company that he um start co-started um really has has been great he's he wrote this book um the habits of health um book and um you know you can even go to health habits of health.com there's tons of resources on there and everything about the whole program you know sure you can order that that and people uh, could email people could email you and oh, yeah. chat with you about it um, because sure. I think many of us have, you know, I've lost the same 40 and 60 pounds. I don't know how many times in the last 10 years, probably 15. And that's not good for you either. And so, right. um, so same email address, right? Or, yeah. Okay. So yeah. tell and us it's again. really not, I mean, I don't coach a diet at all. It's, sure. It's just like a, it's a trans, real transformational thing because it's a lifestyle transformation yeah, to yep. to do these healthy habits and get into and that's you know, where certainly you're really what thriving, we need right yeah 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 um, so tell us the your email address again warners w-a-r-n-e-r-s one two three four at gmail.com yeah and um, if, you know, in the topic line of the email, just put, you know, weight loss journey. Um, if it's about the teen groups, put teen groups. If it's about preteen groups, put preteens. That'll help her uh, know yeah, what that, you're writing about. Great. Yeah. And uh, so I want to encourage all of us because I know here in the last three weeks, I the reality of having put weight on and not being at my optimum weight or the right weight uh, prior to COVID and then putting on more weight on top of that, I started thinking about the fact, oh, I got to get back on airplanes and travel. And that's the worst part for me because your arms, you don't know what to do with your arms when your tummy is too big. And uh, it's just so uncomfortable. And I, mm-hmm. for the last two or three weeks, have been detoxing from sugar and eating differently. And I just feel better. I have less aches and pains even in just that yeah. short amount of time. And that's kind of what keeps me going. And uh, mm-hmm. so there is that detoxing from sugar and stuff like that. So a coach could be very beneficial to folks. And But I think when we do better physically, we do better emotionally. And the two it's kind of, true. yeah, and when we're doing better emotionally, we're ready to do something about the physical. So I'd mm. encourage you to get a hold of uh, Kayla and chat with her about it. Well, you've had a number of important journeys, and I'm so thankful you're willing to share them with us. Uh, oh, yeah. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, and we so appreciate you and Fresh Open, all that you're doing with the teens and the preteens and helping us. And I want to encourage our listeners to be sure and uh, write to Kayla if, um, in fact, you're interested and in wanting to know more or possibly even to start a teen group in your own area and uh, things like that. That's good. We love to talk with you about it. Um, Kayla, would you sure. mind just uh, praying for those who are listening today and uh, bring us to a close with your prayer? Oh, I'd love to do that. So let's go ahead and pray. Dear God, I just ask that you um, you be with us all, be with all the listeners that are listening today. And I just pray that um, you just... 
um, guard their hearts, their minds in, in Christ Jesus and give them peace. And, and the Lord, you know, if some people um, are needing, um, needing some help in this, these areas, you know, with their, with their teenagers, mm -hmm. with their preteens, um, with uh, just breaking the holds that um, even like um, sugar might have on on their lives, mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. just being um, being able to um, feeling like they have some freedom that they really like to break through to, you know, the Lord just help them to step out and just take action. And not be afraid and, and just um, because breakthrough is really on the other side um, to contend for their health or just help them to really um, decide, you know, to make that decision um, to help themselves uh, because there's just freedom on the other side, Lord. In, in yes. all these areas of, of health all, and, you know, yeah. even with their teenagers and with the preteens. You know, if we got to, I feel like getting things right, Lord, in our, in our minds is so important mm. uh, at this time, Lord. And yeah. I just ask that you, you just help all our listeners, Lord, and just give them the courage and strength to reach out if they need to reach out Thank you, Lord. Um, and help them not to be afraid um, because fear is not from you, Lord. Mm -hmm. And I pray these things and thank you so much for Jesus and what he's done for us. We mm -hmm. praise you every day for that. And I pray in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us today. I really appreciate you, Kayla. And um, you're welcome. Thank you for taking the time and tell your husband hi. And we're grateful to have that. had you. Well, yeah. my friends, that's it for this edition of Fresh Hope for Mental Health. I pray it's been helpful to you. Somehow I know it's been. And we'd really love to hear from you. You can email um, Kayla, for instance, as we said, warners1234 at gmail.com, as well as you could email me with comments or questions or suggestions for topics at Pastor Brad at freshhope.us. And um, we'd love to hear from you on social media. We also have a YouTube channel and things like that. And would you mind doing me a favor? If you're listening to this podcast on iTunes, but please comment on the i uh, on the i iTunes uh, uh, platform, and your comments help other people find us on iTunes, and so that helps in the ranking and their algorithms, and heaven knows how they do all that, but anyway, and of course, we have groups for those of us who struggle with mental health issues, or if you love someone, and you can find those online at freshhope.us, and the other thing is, is please be sure to tell your friends about this program. So until the next time, may the Lord fill you with his hope, fresh and new daily. I'm Brad Hafes, and this has been another edition of Fresh Hope for Mental Health. You've been listening to Fresh Hope for Mental Health. If you have an opportunity, please review, share, and subscribe to the Fresh Hope for Mental Health podcast on iTunes or on the service that you use. We encourage you to share our podcast on social media with your friends and family. Previous podcasts of Fresh Hope for Mental Health can be found at freshhopeformentalhealth.com, iHeartRadio, Stitcher Radio, and iTunes. Fresh Hope is one of the leading networks of faith-based peer support groups internationally. For more information about Fresh Hope, go to freshhope.us.